chain that God has broken for me, I think, is, is living by fear and living under condemnation and living by like works of salvation, trying to strive for myself, trying to strive for my salvation. My family, uh, I grew up in a really Christian home and um, my dad's a Baptist minister, music minister, and so I grew up having to be really good, really perfect, um, and not doing anything wrong. And I kind of had religion shoved down my throat a little bit, not for my parents, but just some more like the church thing, and I felt like I had to, and, and to be this good girl. So in high school and you know, growing up, I was really good, but I was also very fearful of God. And that kind of stemmed from seeing this play when I was seven years old called Heaven's Gates, Hell's Flames. And it was scary. I mean, it was about um, this family who was in a car wreck and the dad and the mom and the, and the children were at the pearly gates and like the dad wasn't a Christian and the mom and the children were and like you see them being pulled apart and like Satan's like laughing over the dad and and um, it was just terrifying and it kind of had like a, a root in my heart of you know, don't make God mad you know and, and don't do anything wrong. I went throughout high school being really scared um, and like having to read my Bible all the time and listening to sermons and even through college, even last year, it got really bad to where um, if I wasn't reading my Bible or if I wasn't, you know, listening to sermon after sermon after sermon, um, I just felt like I was far from God and that I wasn't doing what he wanted me to do. And um, I feel like I would walk down UNT I like see someone and I'm like, I gotta tell them about Jesus, you know? And if I don't, I'm like this horrible Christian. And it was just all workspace and I couldn't even see what God was really about. Um, I got to this point where the girls that I lived with, Allie and Chelsea and Sarah King um, and Sandra, I, like, I just needed affirmation from people telling me that I was good, telling me that I was, you know, saved. And that, <clears throat> like I, because I wasn't seeking that affirmation from God. I wasn't trusting enough that he was enough. Um, so I would run to them and run to them and run to them, but it would never be enough. It would only last a couple hours. Um, you know, I'd, I'd feel good for those couple hours and then I would get back into my pity party and then I had to go back to them again. So it got to the point where I was even going to Ronnie and Al Pickering and, um, and Brandon Worsham and Brad Davis and and match everyone and um, it didn't do me any good um, just made things worse I think but Ronnie kind of hit it on the head and he was like I think you're really obsessing on these things and you're really not being able to let go and I think you need to talk to someone um, kind of like a medication the medication route and I was very very fearful and kind of doubtful about that because I was like am I just you know, putting my head, head in the sand and, and not really doing anything about it. I'm just taking the easy way out about medication. And so, um, but I tried it and I don't know what happened, but like two weeks in, I was able to listen just to sermons and read scripture and, and listen to Ronnie speak and listen to Matt Chandler speak and, and, and come to focus and able, be able to worship and, and not compare myself to people. And I was able to actually see the good news. I had this realization that I one day am gonna have to stand before God and I'm gonna have to um, represent myself. I'm not gonna be able to have anybody in focus tell, tell him how good I was, or I did this for this person, or, oh, she's just so great, and, you know, she's a Corfa, and she really helped me, and, like, that doesn't mean anything. I mean, it's really what's in your heart, and, uh, um, I got really scared, because I was like, I can't take anybody with me. Instead of like getting really, really scared about that or worried about that or self-pitying, I had this realization, I don't know if it was from God or probably, but um, 
the whole point of Jesus is the fact that he represents us. Um, the good news is about the fact that I don't have to stand before God by myself. Um, I don't have to bring, well, I get to bring who I am. I can't continue to think, oh, I'm so horrible, oh, I'm not enough, because how can he use me if I keep thinking that? How can he, I can be used, how can I be used for the kingdom? I can't, because I'm so self-focused, I'm so inner-focused, um, and I still struggle with that. I think I'm going to be struggling with that some for the rest of my life. I don't have to be driven by fear anymore. I can be driven by love. I can be driven by the fact that God was thinking of me when he, when he died for me, instead of like, he had to die for me. He wanted to die for me. Um, that he likes me and just, not just loves me. That, he is not, that I'm not a burden to him. I keep getting in my mind that I'm like this burden. He's just like, oh my gosh, come on, Anna. But it's like, no. Um, he wants me to be with him, um, even when I don't want to be with him. Um, but I'm not a burden. 